Hello everybody, Navster here. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about six gear items that I changed while hiking the Appalachian Trail. So I think we all go through the same process. We labor over all these gear choices before we start the trail. We're in discussion forums online, um, and ultimately we buy gear and we get out onto the trail and we regret the, the gear that we bought, um, or we just want to improve and get lighter gear. Um, I did it just like everybody else does, and I thought I had the perfect gear before I started. Uh, but as I think everybody does, I also changed gear along the way. So I have six items today that I changed while hiking the Appalachian Trail. These are really the only things that I changed. Um, six may seem like a lot to you, I'm not sure. Uh, this does not include things that I sent home, for example, like my cold weather gear and so on. But these are six items that I started with uh, and that I finished with, but somewhere along the way I switched, you know, switched products. I'm going to actually do these in the order that I changed them. So the first item was camp shoes. And I actually made this change at mile 31 at the Mountain Crossing store uh, in such as Georgia. I started with the Zero Trail Sandal. When I looked at this sandal online, uh, it seemed to be minimalistic. It seemed to be very well designed for the job. Fairly lightweight. Uh, one of the things I looked for was being able to get my foot into it with socks on, so that there was you know no material between the toes, for example. Uh, so it met that criteria. Uh, it was fairly compact so that I could tie it to my backpack easily. Met that criteria. I wanted something that could you know stay on my foot. Um, if I needed to go downhill to get water or across a creek and so on, something like that. Um, and it met that criteria. But the criteria that it did not meet is it was difficult to get my foot into the sandal because of all the straps. In the middle of the night, if I needed to get up and go outside and use the bathroom, um, it just took longer than I wanted it to. And when I'm half asleep, I didn't want to have to deal with all the straps. So I found myself, you know, with my toes in the front strap and just standing on the back straps. So what good were the back straps? It didn't stay on my foot at that point. Uh, even if I did get all the straps on, uh, my foot slid around on the shoe to the point where my toes were sliding off the front if I was going downhill. Uh, so then my socks got dirty, dirtier, uh, and my toes, or if I didn't have socks on, my toes got dirty. So at the Mountain Crossing store, I changed to a pair of Waldies. They're basically a Crocs. Uh, they still have the strap that goes around the back uh, for you know keeping them on my foot they're extremely comfortable lots of cushion um, you know the big downfall with them is they look horrible they're the ugliest looking shoe in my opinion uh, and the only color they had in my size at mountain crossings were these lovely gray ones uh, so i got stuck with a with a nasty color uh, these croc knockoffs lasted me for the entire rest of the trail the second item that I changed were my boots. So I think a lot of people talk about changing their boots and that that's like one of the most stressful gear items that you can purchase. It could end up bad if you don't get the right ones. So I changed my boots at approximately mile 100 in Franklin, North Carolina. I actually have another video specifically about my boot choice and I go into more depth around why I wanted to get a new pair of boots and which ones I changed to. Um, and how much better those that second pair of boots were. So check that video out. I'll put a link down in the description for that one. The third item I changed out was my sleeping pad. And I did this at the NOC in North Carolina. So I started with a Sea to Summit Comfort Light pad. It was the long pad, which also means that it was wider than the regular pad. So it was long and wide, which meant it was fairly heavy compared to a lot of ultralight pads. It was extremely comfortable though. Uh, I did like this pad. Um, I liked that it was long and wide as far as comfort goes. Um, it felt good. Um, it has a lot of good cushion. I never touched the ground. It kept me warm, which was another good thing. Um, I looked at R values before purchasing a pad. This pad has an R value of 4.2, which is pretty nice. Um, I also love the way it inflates and deflates. Uh, the valve is unique to Sea to Summit, I believe. Um, it takes very few breaths to blow it up and get a really tight pad. And when you're ready to undo it, you just pop that tab off and it immediately deflates. 
practically you know 90% of the year as soon as you pop that tab deflates so why did I get rid of it well because it was too big uh, not because it weighed too much uh, but because the dimensions were too large I had a z-packs and still do have z-packs duplex tent and by the time it was inflated and fully set up in my tent it was just too long um, it, it pretty much reached the entire length of the of the tent tub and therefore if I slid in any way shape or form or if I was on a little bit of a slant then it would push the tub outside of uh, the main wall of the tent so my mistake on that was I should have just gotten the regular size and it probably would have uh, stayed with me the entire trail I switched to the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite which has a lower R value but it's a pretty common pad out on the trail it's lighter than the Sea to Summit. Uh, it also rolls up into a tighter, tighter ball, a tighter roll than the uh, Sea to Summit. Um, and it's lasted me the entire rest of the way from the NOC all the way to Katahdin. The fourth item that I changed, I actually changed somewhere in Virginia, probably a little bit after Damascus, maybe a couple stops after Damascus. The weather was warming up, uh, so I didn't necessarily, this isn't a winter gear item that I sent home necessarily, but it's kind of in that category. I started with a Enlightened Equipment Revelation 20 degree quilt and it's a 950 fill. It's the long and the wide version uh, which I'm glad that I got. I enjoy having more quilt even though that means it's a little more weight. I switched that to a Enlightened Equipment 50 degree Revelation Apex. So my first one was a down quilt. Uh, the Apex is actually a synthetic material that Enlightened Equipment uses. Uh, and I got a 50 degree quilt. So I also got it in the long and wide version. Uh, and that quilt lasted me from a little bit past Damascus all the way to Hanover, New Hampshire. So I mentioned before on some other of my videos that I sleep pretty warm. And so, you know, there were some chilly nights uh, in the latter part of, or in the middle part of Virginia, I guess. Uh, and maybe some chilly nights in Vermont as we started getting closer to the end. But overall, that 50 degree apex quilt it rolled up like it was you know basically a liner is what it seemed like extremely lightweight uh, and it did the trick for me there were even some nights in the summer where you know i didn't use it because it was just too much so i'm glad i made that change so the fifth item i changed was my rain jacket now i have lots of opinions on rain jackets for the appalachian trail but the main reason i changed my rain jacket is that my first one, which was a Patagonia M10, and I think it was actually like the 2016 version. So it has a full zipper down the front, it has a chest pocket, it also has two hand pockets. It does not have pit zips, uh, but the hand pockets, hand zips are high so that you're, they don't get in the way of your pack waist belt. It's a great jacket kept me dry as much as a jacket does on the Appalachian Trail. Did I sweat in it? Yes, I did. I've learned that, as I mentioned before, um, I, I heat up pretty quickly. So I, I got to a point where I didn't wear rain jackets on the Appalachian Trail, even when it rained. But the reason I got rid of the Patagonia M10 is that it was just too bulky. Uh, it, was, it was a large, which I got the large because it was... Uh, heavily discounted since it was the prior year model. Um, I got a really good deal on it, but ultimately it was just bulky around my backpack when I had it on. It was just too much material. When I rolled it up, it was you know half the size of a football, so it wasn't the most compact jacket. So somewhere around Blacksburg, Virginia, I switched to the OR Helium 2, uh, another very common rain jacket on the Appalachian Trail. And that one lasts me all the way to Katahdin. Uh, it rolls up pretty compact, keeps you dry where it needs to. It's a minimalistic jacket, no pockets, no pit zips. It does have the, the chest pocket, um, but a good, a good jacket for what it needs to do. And the last item that I changed uh, were my trekking poles. So I started with the Lecky Micro Vario TI DSS poles. Now, I think, you know, in Leckie terms, I believe the Micro Vario uh, label means it's one of their collapsible poles. So these were collapsible. Uh, they were titanium, which is what the TI is. The DSS is a, 
uh, kind of an anti-shock cushion on the t near the tips of the poles. But ultimately, I got these because they were lightweight. You know, I was I was wanting to get the best performing, most professional trekking pole out there. They were not cheap, but it was a mistake. Uh, ultimately, the more moving parts you have, the more chance of things breaking. And uh, the the nipples on the poles that keep them locked together while you're hiking never seem to stay together. Uh, for whatever kind of random reason, they would always get depressed um, and then the poles would collapse or come loose and just kind of be dangling in three or four different pieces. And that never happened when I needed them the most, you know, going down steep descents or anything like that. Uh, but they were very annoying. All the different parts would just continue to kind of uh, disconnect and collapse without me wanting them to. Um, and ultimately, somewhere in Pennsylvania, really within about a three-day period, both of the poles broke. So I hiked for a few days with a single pole because the first one broke, and I had to keep it uh, to use for my tent. Uh, but within a few days, the second pole broke, and I did get another pair of Leckies. Uh, these were the Lecky Cork Light, and they're not collapsible like the Micro Vario. They are telescoping poles. And those lasted me from somewhere in early Pennsylvania all the way to Katahdin. Uh, and I'll take those with me as I start the PCT this year in April. So as you can see, not everybody gets it right. Uh, I don't think anybody claims to get it, to get it right. Uh, there were, those were six items that I changed after starting the Appalachian Trail. Uh, hopefully this is some information that will help you make some decisions about your gear. Some of it's a personal thing, some of it's not. Um, for those personal items, you'll figure it out. Uh, you can see for me, I figured out really most of these things by the time I got to Virginia. You know, the critical things I figured out pretty early on, even before I got to, you know, basically the border of North Carolina or just a little bit beyond at the NOC. So take some time, give your gear purchases some thought, but don't stress too much. You'll have plenty of time and, you know, to change those items or to tweak what you need to tweak as you go down the trail. So if you liked this video and thought it was helpful, uh, just subscribe. There should be a button here in the lower left-hand corner. I hope you have a great time out there on the AT this year. So I'll see you out there later.